Are you seeing the massive amounts of equity that has been gained in the last couple of years and wondering, is it too late to sell your home in today's market? Hey, Tania Thomas here, Jesus lover, dedicated wife and mom, serial entrepreneur and extraordinary real estate broker. Today, I wanna share my expertise from working in this current market and answer some frequently asked questions that I get as a listing agent. I wanna talk you through things that you need to consider if you're thinking about selling. So the current market is driven by a low supply of homes and high buyer demand. But as interest rates increase, as we've been seeing, inflation rises and food costs goes up, we'll be seeing affordability go down for buyers. So the amount of buyers in the market may decrease in turn and allow inventory to start building up. Right now, the market is still high. We're still seeing multiple offer situations on most of the listings that I take in. So yes, it is still a good time to sell. It's not too late. There are some things that I want you to think about before selling your home though. The biggest thing is where are you planning to go? That's gonna be a huge part of the process. Are you gonna rent, purchase, or even move out of state? You need to think about that. No matter what you're planning to do, you definitely need to start researching those things and get help with creating a plan. Because the inventory of homes are still low, selling your home will be the easy part, especially if you find a good realtor and listen to their advice. But finding another home to move to will be the challenge. So you would definitely need to create a plan around that first, and that's why you wanna make sure you talk through your move with the realtor. You wanna understand what the market is doing wherever you're looking to move to. If you need a good realtor, no matter what state you're in or thinking of moving to, I can point you in the right direction. The next thing you have to think about is will you have capital gain tax when you sell your property? So I think it's really important for you to count the cost before you make any move. I have good news for you though. If you're thinking about potentially selling your primary residence or even a property that you moved out of within the last couple of years, if you've lived in the property for two of the last five years, you could in most markets be tax exempt. I say most markets because in some markets you may have huge gains, which is a good thing, but you are only exempt from the first $250,000 of the gain from the sale if you're single and $500,000 of your gain if you're married. So if you gain more than the $250,000 as a single person or $500,000 as a married person, you would have to pay taxes on the difference. But if you don't, if, you, if it's under $250,000 or $500,000 if you're married, then you won't. So it is a misconception that I want to address. People think if you put all the money in your new home that you're buying, you won't have to pay taxes on the sale. The only way to get out of capital gains taxes is if it's your primary residence or if you're an investor and you do a 1031 exchange. In most cases, the gains are so great that it outweighs the tax liability anyway. But either way, you want to make sure you factor all of this in when you're making a decision to sell. Okay, so once you think through these things and you're ready to sell, let me tell you a little bit about what you will see in this current market. Right now, we're in May and the market is heating up. It's kind of hot. <laughs> and this is really one of the hottest selling markets we've seen. But as I said, what I'm currently seeing in, is multiple offers and buyers being above asking price, waiving contingencies like inspections and even giving appraisal guarantees. Meaning, if it doesn't appraise, they'll pay the difference between their purchase price and the appraisal. Some buyers are doing escalation clauses, which say, I will pay X dollars over the highest offer you have up to a certain price. So it's a lot of homes that are getting bid way over asking price. So sellers have a huge advantage in this market. It does get a little tricky if you're looking to buy as well because you have to make sure you have your timelines in order because you most likely will not get your first offer accepted. The good thing is that as a seller, you can ask for time to stay in your current home after closing. That's called post-closing possession or lease back. This is what I did when I sold my home because I literally jumped out in faith and sold my home because the market was rising and I had a ton of equity and wanted to take advantage of it and move to a bigger and better home. Buyers in this market are more likely to give longer possession times and some will even give it to you free as an incentive to get their offer accepted because they rather had a house they want secure and wait instead of continuing the search. Overall, this is the type of market that wealth through real estate is built in. If you have a lot of equity in your home, you could cash it in, move to a better home, and still have a significant amount of money left over, or downsize, and invest all of your money to build a better life for yourself. Whatever 
sure you do. Just make sure you have a solid plan for the money that you gain. Don't squander it all. So I hope this has been informative. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.